Hey, this is Ari Koenuma, and I'm talking to my friend Julie today, uh, who asked me to look at uh, Black Lodge's song called Breviclum. Uh, Black Lodge is an indie uh, industrial rock band from LA, and uh, they uh, have an, an EP out, and I think uh, maybe a full length is in the works. But anyway, she told me that this is her favorite lyric, lyric and that uh, she wanted to, to see you know what I think about it so here I am um, it's you know uh, a really pro pro propelling hard rock song and oh I know the propulsive is the word I'm looking for propulsive it just just really has a strong moment forward momentum it just has a just a he heroic soaring chorus and um, it's really well put together has a nice hook and and the songwriting is is mature and and all that but uh lyrically uh we talked about how you know it has a bit of nine inch nails i also heard uh as i was listening i had a bit of melvin melvin manson i can't pronounce that his name but um you know it has that that it's definitely a, a dark act and um we you know thought about you know what might be the value of listening to songs that obviously comes from a dark or what you might call evil point of view and you know what is the value in that is that you know is and and it's it's still an art and that uh, there is a value I I really believe that there is a value in in listening to these dark and evil songs that you know that you know and then you know at least for mature minds who can really sort of separate the reality from fantasy and imagination from uh, real life but um so with this song i thought about a couple of things first of all i thought that the sense of uh freedom that comes from exploring this amoral terrain in a way because any sort of moral morality or ethics or whatever it's it's also like a, a somebody else's standard or it could be your own too but it's just it's it's a sort of code that you have to live by or whatever and I think I think that our imagination lives somewhere freer and that it's probably not for everybody, for, but for some of us, it's not just repressed anger. I mean, repressed anger, I don't think is good for anybody to carry around. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, what we're exposed to and what we can imagine and, and you know, uh, those of us with fertile imagination can, can find fascination in dark and evil things because there's freedom in having not having to sort of adhere to a particular set of codes and just be able to to be you know as intense and that intensity may come from violence or you know be able to destroy things or tear things down and just uh, I, I I feel there is a sense of exhilaration that comes from uh, of just exploring sort of you know what some may consider evil and if it you know did happen in real life you know I would call it evil too but in imagination I think it's safe in art I think it is safe to explore the inner violence or inner intensity or you know inner need to be free and I really believe that like uh, you know uh, at at an ideal state, a mind that is happy is one that is not hiding anything. Like there is no need to carry, you know, things that are just sort of secret and hidden, and that um, you know all desires and intentions. I think art is a place for it to be honored. Now, of course, from a consumer's point of view, I mean, of course, some material is not appropriate to expose children to, for example. And so, you know, I am saying that a certain amount of, how should I say, 
warning system or, or identifying you know certain materials to for being what it is and and you know making sure that people who are consuming it are aware of its impact and and uh, and you know not you know take it anywhere any place you know where it's not supposed to be taken but in its context i think that dark and evil pieces or things expressed in art gives us that taste of freedom and of that you know i don't care what everybody else think i don't care what the consequences are i am just going to engage in this imagination and and stay there at least within the realm of art and i think that has value and secondly, especially with this song, I, I think that there is value in sort of a being exposed to some overwhelming, you know, intense power or, or something and, and surrendering. And, you know, this song is about this whatever it is uh, that you know uh, evil spirit or whatever uh, or relationship but um you know who wants to come and you know destroy you in a way it's it's talking about taking away your hopes and dreams and and uh, consuming you and but but you know while you know you might be defensive against that going well you know i need to protect myself i need to sort of make sure that such thing doesn't touch me or well, I, I think there's a flip side of that is, you know, I, uh, for, for some of us, some dreams, some hopes are baggages and burdens too. And I'm like, well, hey, he wants to just, you know, gut me out, rip me up, you know, just shred me to pieces so that, you know, I'm hollowed out inside. I might get to start on you. I might have a clean slate after that. I don't know that to me there's a certain sense of again another sense of exhilaration and, and in, uh, engagement from the idea of surrendering and of course in real life I don't want to surrender myself to somebody who's intent on destroying me but within the context of the song within the safety of art I can engage in that surrender and I can engage in that, that feeling and from it comes this sense of you know being immersed in something you know when when something intense happens the the healing aspect of that is that you when when you're engaged when you're thoroughly immersed somewhere you're not worried about all the other day-to-day chores and burdens and and commitments and responsibilities and all that and you're free from all that you're immersed you're having a flow experience and flow experience for better or worse could happen from something really that makes you afraid because fear is very engaging and and i can see in certain minds or how that could be sort of a cleansing effect after you're done with it you know so things like horror movies and stuff uh, I think can have that kind of effect on somebody. So I really believe in you know the the freedom of expression in that there's a time and place for such art to exist, and this song is part of that school of thought that you know says that you know here is some really what you know we will label it as evil and distractive impulse, but I am going to honor it by uh, turning it into art. And I think that is good for humanity. I think that is a mature thing for a civilization to be able to allow that to happen because it, it is in some of us. And what better place to honor that, to let it out so that we're not just carrying you know, things inside than to turn into a piece of art. So anyway, um, so that's my thought about this song. And uh, in closing, Julie, I want to thank you again for uh, the suggestion. And I also want to thank you on behalf of all the independent bands that you champion, that you are you know, just uh, loyal and, and enthusiastic fan. And 
I know we connected, I believe, because we're both fans of Socionic, and um, we really appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. So let's keep in touch and let's keep talking about music. Thank you. Crimson Reese